Hi viewers, in this particular video we will be doing another problem which was asked in gate. So you are given a mechanical system as shown here and I request you to read through the lines of the problem very carefully because here this particular road AB is not massless, it is having a mass of little m and it is hinged at the point C and the respective lengths of the segments AC and CB are given. Then ends of A, the ends A and B are supported by springs as shown over here and their spring constant is given K as shown here. They are asking us to compute the natural frequency of the system. If you are able to solve the problem on your own, pause this video, give it a try. And if you are not able to solve it on your own, you can watch the rest of my video. Before we get into the nitty gritty of solving this problem, let me tell you a few basic things. See, I, I, I'm, I, have, I'm, I will draw three different mechanical systems. On the screen, I have shown you three different mechanical systems. One, two and three. The key thing is, all of them are single degree of freedom systems, but there is an inherent thing which differentiates the nature of the problem. In the first case, the mass little m will undergo a pure translation, while in case 2, the mass little m is undergoing a rotational motion about the hinge point. Let's say uh, this point is O, then I would say... <laughs> It is undergoing a pure rotation about that particular point capital O. When it comes to third case, this particular one where you have a disc and the disc is connected to a rigid wall using a spring. Uh, in this case, interestingly, the point at which the spring is connected is not at the center. It is slightly at an eccentric location. In this particular case, the mass of our interest is this disc of mass little m. It's a disc. It's a disc of mass m. The possible motion for this particular disc is a combined rotation and translation. So the equations of motion are different in each of these three scenarios. So when you get a vibration problem, the first question you should ask yourself is what kind of motion is my mass of interest or is, is my little m is undergoing and depending upon that you need to frame Newton's second law makes sense so that's too much of introduction let's go ahead and try solving this problem so asking the same question what kind of motion this road is undergoing it's undergoing a pure rotation about the hinge point C in order to talk about rotation or when when we talk about uh, pure rotation we usually use this formula mass moment of inertia about the hinge point let's say in this case hinge point is C so I will say it is J or uh, C not J O uh, here it is J C is J C we need to compare the dimensions of J C will be kilo kilogram per meter square because it is a polar moment of inertia or you can say simply mass moment of inertia that we need to first compute it the formula will be j theta double dot jc theta double dot is equal to sum of the moments or sum of the torques acting about that particular point that particular pivot point okay makes sense so let's first evaluate the polar moment of inertia of a road about this particular axis about the axis that goes through the center of the road. The definition for polar moment of inertia is j, j equal to r square dm. See, some people tend to buy hard all these formulas. They know that they may be knowing that the polar moment of inertia of the axis of a road about this particular axis is, axis is ml square by 12, where m is the mass of the road and the capital L is the length of the road. So they, they, they may be knowing this. If, if you know this formula already, then you can just skip the, or you can just fast forward these two minutes because here I'm going to explain how you arrive at this particular formula, j equal to ml squared by 12. So here, 
I have shown you, I have taken a small uh, dx element, which is at a distance x. I have defined my positive x from this point. This is the origin you can say. Then you know polar moment of inertia is defined like this, integral r square dm, where r is the distance from the axis of interest. Uh, in our case, r will be same as x, x square and dm, the mass of the small little element will be capital A, where A is the area of cross section, rho is the density and dx is the small length as shown here. This is that small length I am talking about. So, so now we have an expression which can be integrated from the limits minus L by 2 to capital L by 2. Rest of everything is simple maths and once you do all the maths properly you will end up in this with this particular expression well and good but the key thing to remember is that this particular expression gives you the mass moment of inertia about an axis that is going through the center of the road but in our case the pivot point is not at the center the pivot point let me use a different color for that the pivot point is somewhere here as you can see here, the axis about which my bar is pivoted is at a distance of L by 2 minus L by 3 from the center of the bar, from the middle point of the bar. Then I need to use parallaxis theorem to compute the J about that particular point. So you're going to use parallaxis theorem. Uh, we will... You, let me write the mass moment of inertia about the point C, about an axis that is going through C can be written as mass moment of inertia about the point O plus mass of the road and square of the distance. Uh, this L by 2 minus L by 3 can be written as L by 6. Am I right? Yes, I am right. So this will be ml by 6 whole square. Sorry, L by 6 whole square. And we know that J0 is nothing but ml square by 12 plus ml square by 36. Simplifying this whole expression, I will be having... 3 ml square plus ml square divided by 36 that will be ml square by 9 so that is the polar moment of inertia of the road about the point c about the pivot point c okay well and good now we know all the inputs let's go ahead and solve the problem once again just drawing the schematic of the things this is the point c about which it is pivoted and i i have my masses over here like this good now this won't be the initial deformed configuration initially the deformed configuration will be somewhat like this i am exaggerating it it will be something like this it will be very small let's call this initial deflection or the static deflection is delta and now from delta i am defining my new coordinate system theta this is my theta over here makes sense this is a single degree of freedom system so theta will be the particular variable that will completely define the state of the system and delta is so so small compared to your theta okay now the next thing is to draw the free body diagram and use newton's second law for this kind of motion which is pure rotation about the pivot point c so here you can see i have shown um all the forces acting on the system 
this force is coming from the spring so as the this is the positive direction of theta so that's why the positive direction of theta double dot is L in this direction so when the bar is rotating in this particular direction this particular spring gets compressed and this particular spring the second spring gets extended so from the first spring you will have a force acting in the downward direction as shown here k times the deflection since theta is the angular deflection again to be if, if you ask me correctly it will be theta plus delta but since delta is very very small compared to theta then this can be approximated as theta itself so this angle is theta so this angle will be also theta and the amount of compression in the first spring will be theta times l by 3 using a same logic this angle is theta and this length is 2l by 3 so the deflection in the spring will be theta times 2l by 3 and that's a force acting here f2 so now we know all the forces acting at the point then the next step is using this formula mass moment of inertia about the point c times the angular acceleration is equal to sum of the moments about the point c so j is ml squared by 9 and now it's time to bring together all the moment terms this is coming from the second force because this is the positive direction those of theta double dot now f2 times this distance which is 2l by 3 which will resist the motion which will resist the rotation along the positive theta double dot direction so that's why i have a negative sign over here the similarly from the first force also this as this whole bar rotates about the point c in the positive theta direction it will resist the motion the spring force from the spring one will resist the motion or uh, by an amount this force times this distance which is shown over here as you can see here this is from the first spring and this is from the second spring this is the force then this is the momentum this is the force and this is the momentum this minus one signs are there because they are resisting the motion they are not helping it that's why there is a minus sign now just again some very simple mathematic mathematics and finally you will end up with this particular expression over here ml square theta double dot equal to 5 is equal to minus 5 kl square theta simplifying the equation further you are finally arriving here m theta double dot plus 5k theta is equal to 0 that means natural frequency of your system will be 5k divided by m uh, the point is when you have a typical expression like this mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 then the natural frequency of the system will be omega n equal to root k by m you don't have to solve it all together you can just remember this whenever you have an expression of this sort like generally you can say c1 theta double dot plus c2 theta is equal to zero then the natural frequency will be root of c2 by c1 so using the same logic natural frequency of the system will be 5k divided by m thanks for watching